So uh, today I'll talk to you about uh, uh, my PhD project. That's an ongoing project on uh, Panofsky Econological Studies, which focuses on the creation of a linked open data data set containing artworks interpretations, uh, containing so uh, iconological and uh, iconographical interpretations. I divided the talk in two main parts. There's a first introductory part um, about the project and the research questions, uh, what is iconography and iconology, and uh, the state of the art related to the modeling uh, and availability of data of iconography and iconology. And the second part, which focuses more on uh, the project. So a general description, the ontological modeling, a brief overview of the analysis and conclusion and future work. So the project aims at answering domain specific research questions in a quantitative way through the implementation of semantic web technologies. And uh, therefore is our, the intersection between uh, uh, different fields. And uh, I decided to focus on the semantic web technologies because uh, I think that thanks to the flexibility with which it's possible to express complex semantic information, it's a good means for expressing uh, uh, the complexity of an art historical interpretation and especially of uh, an iconographical and iconological interpretations. To this aim, uh, in order to start the project, let's say, it's uh, fundamental to answer to research questions such as, are there ontological modelings uh, available to express the domain and uh, is there structured data containing information about it? And finally, um, another one, a research question um, is uh, which are, what are the results of the data analysis conducted on uh, structured data about the domain. So first of all, I give you a brief introduction of uh, this domain, that's uh, iconography and iconology. And these two words indicate um, a different aspect of uh, a different focus on uh, the analysis of content and meaning of, of the artwork. Iconography focuses more on the recognition and comprehension of uh, the subject represented, whereas uh, iconology takes uh, the outcomes of an iconographical analysis and places it in uh, relation to social cultural phenomena. And I'm using the term uh, as uh, Warburg started to use it. So, um, we are in the field uh, started by his studies. And uh, the interpretation act uh, in uh, this context is uh, subjective um, because uh, it's based on the intuition of the ob observer. And uh, it can be subdivided into three or four levels of interpretation. Uh, several art historians attempted a formalization uh, but there's not a unique perspective on it. And uh, since I think that it's important to look at, to look at a little bit more into this uh, um, attempt of uh, theorization, I want to show you uh, a brief comparison between the major art historians attempting a subdivision in two levels of the interpretation. They generally agree for the first two levels, which are the most superficial ones. So the degree of levels is from a most superficial interpretation to a deeper one concerning, for example, culture or the artist expression. And uh, they generally agree on the first level in which uh, uh, simple objects are identified, such as uh, people, actions. At the second level of interpretation, these objects are identified as uh, iconographies and subjects thanks to the knowledge of uh, uh, conventional visual representation of the time. 
so for example, if at the first level I identify a woman, at the second level I can identify it as uh, Mary, for example. At the third and fourth level, uh, the art historians uh, disagree a little bit. So um, somebody such as Panoski and uh, Imdau, and uh, in in a way, Gombrich agrees on the fact that um, in this level, the cultural meanings uh, are analyzed and involved. So they consider to which extent um, the culture of the time, the cultural meanings of the time can be detected inside the artwork. And uh, Van Straten agrees with uh, this theme, but he subdivided the, this level in two sublevels, uh, distinguishing uh, the meanings that are voluntary introduced into an artwork from the meanings that are present um, outside of the willing of the of the artist, so the very cultural ones. And uh, Vitkover focuses, for example, uh, more on um, on the artist expression. So um, the deeper meaning uh, concerns the artist artist expression of the personality. For his uh, historical importance, and since he's the first one attempting a theorization um, of the discipline, I decided to focus more on the Panofsky level, on the Panofsky interpretation, uh, taking into account also the considerations made by the other art historians. And uh, here I show you an example of an, an iconological interpretation made uh, by Panofsky in the book Studies in Iconology uh, about a painting by Piero di Cosimo representing the discovery of honey. And uh, Panofsky says that this artwork expresses the um, personality of the artist and the personal ideas of the artist since um, there are other artworks uh, representing uh, the theme of the uh, early stages of um, the humanity. And uh, Panofsky notices that uh, uh, there is a positive uh, connotation of um, the scenes represented when uh, uh, humans are still living uh, in harmony with nature. So this is uh, the third level meaning that uh, he, um, he identifies. But if we want to proceed by steps, he first identifies uh, natural elements, action and objects, such as the crowd of people, the action of making noise. And then, thanks to the uh, reference to textual sources, he identifies the, the subject, in this case, the story of the discovery of Fanny that, according to Ovid, uh, was discovered by, by Bacchus. And um, the scene, uh, thanks to the source, is interpreted since uh, Ovid says that uh, the satyrs used to make noise to um, to make the, um, the bees um, stay on a, on a cave uh, tree uh, in order to, um, to, to, so that they could uh, produce the honey. And uh, so we have uh, the story, we can have uh, symbols, in this case, a paysage more réalisé, and characters with their attributes, uh, such as uh, a pot, um, Bacchus, sorry, so we see that an iconological interpretation concerns different subjects in, um, in an, inside the artwork, different levels, the interaction between, between them, but also the link to external sources, such as other artworks. We said that Panofsky made the interpretation based on uh, multiple artworks. Mm, there can be the reference to other scholars and other references. 
and semantic web technologies are a good mean for for expressing this kind of uh, complexity through ontologies vocabularies rdf datasets and uh, linked open data Currently, it's possible to describe several aspects of uh, the artwork details that's very important for the domain. For example, the general, general details uh, can be expressed through CDOC CRM, and the objects can be described through the same ontology. Um, interpretation details can be given through HICO and um, the simulation ontology uh, provides uh, uh, symbols and how meanings relate to the symbol. Um, citation can be provided and uh, uh, iconographies and their attributes can be expressed both by uh, the visual representation ontology by Nicola Carboni and uh, by icon class and uh, Getty vocabularies. So there are currently uh, good means for expressing several aspects, several interesting aspects of uh, art uh, history. Nevertheless, the representation of uh, iconological interpretation is still limited with the current means. I did hear a comparison of the two ontologies uh, describing in a more in a more in, 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 in describing deeper the, the subjects and their meanings. And uh, both uh, the visual representation ontology and Wikidata are uh, quite good for expressing uh, iconographies and um, iconographical subjects with some differences. For example, uh, VIR uh, express very well iconographies and their attributes whereas Wikidata uh, um, has a lot of uh, specification to describe the characteristic of, this, of the depicted subject. For example, the color, the position into the artwork. Both of them express uh, assertion details in different ways, but they don't have a mean to express cultural meanings and to distinguish and relating subjects of different levels. For what concerns the knowledge bases and the RDF data about art history, um, there are several knowledge bases, um, but generally the subject is uh, uh, described uh, with general terms uh, for example, with Dublin core subject, and um, sometimes has they have uh, other specifications. For example, uh, the symbolic uh, meaning in uh, DBpedia, uh, Wikidata, uh, as we said, has more means to express different uh, different uh, aspects of the subject, but. Yeah, generally, even though they are very qualitative sources uh, relating on um, art uh, historical sources um, and uh, um, linking the subject to um, vocabularies such as icon class, they don't provide uh, a further description of the cultural meaning and uh, of the subject in two different levels. So that's why the project focuses on uh, the creation on, uh, on a data set about iconographical and iconological interpretations. Currently, the data set contains a description of around uh, 400 artworks uh, focusing on medieval and Renaissance art that are extracted from uh, the main Panofsky works. And um, I decided to focus on Panofsky still because he had, it had, he had a very relevant role in the modeling, um, in the attempt of uh, 
creating a, a theoretical approach to the domain. And so I expect that he expresses his uh, interpretations in uh, a more in a more coherent way, let's say. The project uh, currently is at the stage of uh, exploring data through vi visualization, and they had uh, many previous phases focusing on the analysis of the, do the domain, uh, the developing of uh, the modeling, uh, uh, the selection of uh, the data, the conversion to RDF, the connection to online resources, and uh, quantitative, some quantitative analysis on it. So the last phase, uh, regards the uh, publication of uh, linked open data. And uh, here I show you a brief overview of the numbers of what's contained into the, the data set. And uh, as said, there are around 400 artworks uh, that are described according to the three levels of interpretation. So there are several subjects identified. Each subject uh, is identified by a uh, recognition. So every interpretation is uh, divided into a sub recognition in each uh, level. And uh, this recognition uh, cite uh, some evidences that may, may be part uh, of books. Uh, books are present as uh, a source of evidence, but also as some artworks, for example, um, illuminations may be part of a book. And uh, the people are either the author of the interpretation, the people represented into the artworks, or the authors of the artworks. The domain modeling is based on pre preliminary work on 11 case studies, um, during which several econological, econological studies by art historians are, has been analyzed and divided into four typologies. And uh, these 11 case studies from uh, the typologies were modeled according to the uh, existing um, ontologies and an extension has been proposed. This extension was then improved during the ontology development. So um, uh, with my colleague, Bruno Sartini, I created uh, an ontology um, on purpose to describe iconographical and iconological interpretation with a high level of granularity. And uh, this ontology regards the artwork content description, whereas the metadata about artworks and their sources are described using uh, current available ontologies. I would like to go a little bit deeper inside the iconography ontology and the icon ontology um, to give you an idea of how data are modeled. And uh, so, so then afterwards, you have a better idea of uh, how can be, how this data can be queried and analyzed. So basically the ontology focuses on the concept of a recognition that's made about a work of art that's aligned to uh, CEDOC CRM uh, visual item. And so that's, part of a um, concrete object. And to this recognition, all the details about the assertion uh, can be attached. The recognition has subclasses for each level. Two of them belongs to the first level of recognition. And the basic modeling principle is that there is a recognition uh, class for each level of interpretation, which recognizes uh, the subject as manifested in this specific artwork considered, which refers to a general subject 
as can be described by vocabularies. Yet this distinction was made to not have overlappings between uh, the description of the object as uh, is it true for the specific artwork we are talking about and uh, the general subject. For example, these wings have, uh, may have uh, some characteristics such as uh, the color white, but this cannot be this cannot be generalized to the subject in uh, in general and the same in the same way cupid here can have some characteristics that are not belonging to the general description of uh, cupid as it is in uh, vocabularies and uh, on the other side there is uh, the recognition uh, that's always carried out by somebody who can cite evidence it. So in this way, every, every subject that is recognized into the data set has uh, an author and uh, can be justified. Um, so now let's see more in detail how the levels are structured. At the first level, as said, we have two recognition. One is the pre-chronographical recognition, which recognizes a first level subject. And uh, it does that by recognizing first the manifestation of the subject into the artwork, which can be in a composition or directly in an artistic motif. So the composi composition is a composition of, is a collection of artistic motifs. And uh, each artistic motif recognizes one of the level one uh, subjects. The recognitions are always directly linked to the artwork. The other type of the recognition that we have is the formal motif recognition that useful when um, result pattern citations occurs, for example, when uh, uh, an artwork copies just uh, the shape of uh, another one um, subject in another one artwork. And uh, this recognition allowed to uh, link the subject in uh, the first artwork to the subject in uh, the other artwork by linking the manifestation of the subject into the, into the artworks. And uh, at the second level of interpretation, here we have uh, the artistic motif or composition recognized at the first level can be linked to a level two subject through another one iconographical recognition, which links the image that's in this case the manifestation of the subject into the artwork. And uh, using the same structure we have seen in the previous level, it, it links um, general level uh, level two subject to the to the artwork. Then these level two subjects can be collected into an invenzione. That's a general term used by Panofsky uh, to indicate the story um, and the allegories. So the story and the, and the allegories are compositions of other level two subjects, and that's why we have this structure here. Finally, at the third level of interpretation, there is an iconological recognition recognizing an uh, intrinsic meaning, that's the manifestation of the third level meaning into the artwork. And this intrinsic meaning is linked to either cultural phenomena or concepts. And uh, it can be directly linked to a specific part of the artwork. To better understand how does it work, I show you an example uh, taken from uh, the data set in which uh, uh, Panofsky and Sachs analyzes this case in which we have uh, um, formal motif recognition. So the second artwork copied the general visual arrangement of the first one. 
And so they recognize that uh, um, the boar is uh, interpreted as a deer, that uh, um, Hercules uh, becomes uh, uh, Christ in this allegory of salvation, and that the, uh, this character here, King Aristeus, uh, becomes a dragoon symbol of devil. And the same happens for the um, lion skin, that's attribute of Hercules, becoming uh, a cloth. According to the subdivision into levels, we can uh, interpret this uh, data in this way in the two artworks. And uh, we can also establish rela relations with, between levels. So for example, the nude man with a cloth becomes Christ at the second level of interpretation. And the act of carrying on shoulders uh, becomes the symbol, symbolical meaning of uh, saving souls. Uh, because uh, since, according to Panofsky and Sachs, uh, the deer is a symbol of the Christian souls, all the scene becomes an, an allegorical scene. And uh, the author claims that uh, this, this copy, this copy of motif, um, but com changing completely the represented subject, are due to um cultural phenomenon of the time that the artist is uh, unwilling to retain a classical prototype without destroying in this case its original meaning so um i show you the formalization i, I don't want to go through all of this but i want just to um let you understand uh, how does it work uh, so we've seen that uh pre iconographical recognition about the work of art, in this case, the allegory of salvation, so the second artwork, recognizes a composition which is composed by two artistic motifs, one of which recognizes the man described in this case as uh, with the characteristic of nud nudity, with the quality of nudity. And the second one, identifying the, the cloth with this, which is a natural element. And uh, at the second level of interpretation, this, we have uh, an uh, iconographical recognition uh, referring to the composition that we have uh, seen uh, right now, and recognizing that this composition is uh, an image uh, so a level two subject as manifested in, in the artwork. And this image uh, is uh, representing uh, Christ, who is a character. And uh, with the same procedure, all the elements of the story are, uh, are described. And uh, with another one of recognition, it's possible to, to say that in this artwork, there's an allegory, that's the allegory of salvation, which is composed of uh, the other identified uh, characters. At the third level of interpretation, uh, we, we see that there is um, an iconological recognition, recognizing an intrinsic meaning, identifying the cultural phenomenon. And uh, other, recognition, other recognitions, such as uh, the concept of uh, redemption that is linked to the allegory, are linked to specific subjects of uh, the artwork. In this case, the level two subjects, so all the images. So now that it's clearer how the data are structured, we can um, have a look more into the data analysis that's uh, subdivided into different parts. The first part is uh, an overview of uh, the data sets. So we exploit the uh, data analysis to um, have a look at uh, 
iconographical and iconological interpretations from uh, a distant point of view. Uh, that's something that's still not, not applied. Uh, so we, we do accounting of uh, the elements and the percentage to do to have an idea of what's in included in the data set. And then we uh, ask questions in a quantitative way. So for example, uh, what are the relations among subjects in the data set? And if there is any concurrence among subjects. Secondly, I, um, I figured out a set of uh, research questions that are important for the, the domain subdivided uh, into uh, the different aspects involved, such as cultural phenomena, iconographies, and uh, so on. And that's important to verify to which extent um, traditional research questions can be answered through data and uh, also uh, what, which are the new questions that can be asked in this way. The final part will take into account the inferencing. So um, is there any pattern emerging that um, is uh, enough to, to say, to predict the behavior of another one artwork with the same characteristics? Here I give you an overview of um, the um, exploratory data analysis that can be done. Uh, for example, here I, um, I did a visualization of the most frequent level one and level two subjects in the data set. And uh, in this Sankey diagram, uh, the relations uh, between uh, subjects of the different levels are visualized. Um, in this case, only artworks having all the three level described are included. So are the levels, uh, the, the artworks without one level are not included. And it, it's interesting to see that uh, the major part of uh, the major connections present in the data set are between natural elements, characters, and uh, cultural phenomena. <clears throat> the research questions are, as I said, divided uh, for typology of uh, focus, and uh, they um, they they try to answer to interesting research questions such as um, if the the cultural phenomena interpretation are supported by evidence as uh, the Panofsky method suggests, or if it's possible to see in a quantitative way an evolution of how concepts are expressed in symbols in in artworks. How does an iconographical subject vary possibly over time? So um, it, it, it would be useful for art historians to have data showing in a glance this kind of uh, this kind of results. I want to focus on the cultural phenomena uh, analysis for for a bit uh, to show you um, the, the results that at this point um, I have. This is focusing on uh, cultural phenomena, and uh, we see that the major parts of the artworks have uh, a cultural phenomenon. And so it's interesting to see if there is any co-occurrence of cultural phenomena and other subjects, and uh, with uh, um, uh, and enough support and confidence, I would say, we see that natural elements uh, relate to two types of uh, cultural phenomena. In this case, uh, iconographical evolution and uh, the concepts about uh, uh, the classical antiquity. And uh, another one research question was to what, is, to what extent an iconological interpretation relies on the results of another one, iconological interpretation. 
And uh, we see that among uh, uh, the citation of uh, interpretation, um, half of them are uh, iconological recognitions that support other iconological recognition. So um, even though it's a small number compared to the world iconological recognition, uh, we have uh, a good part doing, doing this kind of citation. And finally, um, if uh, the question asking uh, if uh, the iconological interpretations are supported by an evidence, um, we see that they are supported by an evidence more than other uh, recognition, but still um, with a not so, so high number uh, because it's around 10% of recognitions having uh, an evidence. So these results should be interpreted with more time and maybe with a aid of an art historian, but it's a way to look at data in, uh, in a different way. And I wanted to show you also um, the topic of uh, iconography is how does an iconographical subject vary? Since uh, thanks to the modeling in two levels, it's possible to see how a single iconography is represented in at the first level and uh, if there are variations, and uh, also to see if, obviously, if images, if uh, pictures are available um, to directly see and uh, do a study over the specific representation in the artwork of, uh, of uh, the subject. And uh, I think this uh, would be a good, uh, a good uh, starting point for many art historians interested in uh, the topic. So to conclude, the semantic web is a good means to represent complexity involved in uh, art history domain. And uh, I created this uh, data set of uh, authoritative iconographical and iconological interpretations focusing on uh, the work by Panofsky. And uh, I started to uh, demonstrate that a quantitative approach to the iconographical and iconological field is uh, possible. Nevertheless, there are some limitations and uh, it is the manual creation of data is uh, subjective to my interpretation and human errors, and it is quantitatively limited. But having this um, data described in this way um, may be of um, help for different uh, research applications um, in the art history field, for example, uh, the detection of uh, patterns in iconolog iconological studies, the uh, research on the difference between uh, the conventional, let's say, um, subject as expressed as, as a vocabulary level and uh, in context representation of the same subjects in the field of art history, and uh, uh, with uh, some colleagues, we already started to do some experiments in that. And uh, also since uh, it's possible to express in a very detailed way the attribution of each assertion, uh, it can be um, a, good, uh, a good starting point for doing research in the art history interpretative debate. And also it can be reused uh, for developing uh, uh, computer vision methods and uh, inferences. Future work uh, has to be done. And first of all, the data publishing and the creation of an interface for visualization and data query. And I think it can uh, be improved uh, by introducing an a tri triple AF description to the images to embed this semantic information directly into the depiction of the artwork. So thank you for your attention.
And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer it.